What's happening, world? It's Kira and Ben again, back with another suggestion. All right, you guys. So as you know, Ben and I are, because of how great you guys have been, I've uh, been going through some of the recommendations and suggestions you've been leaving us. So uh, we're diving into our second one, which is Adarhan. And if I've pronounced that wrong, I'm very sorry. Now, this was a very fun, I would say dark comedy from 2018. I have watched it on Netflix, even though it was released a few years ago. This was my first time watching it. Ben, what about you? Same. Got the recommendation from a listener on YouTube. And we took it to heart and we listened, uh, watched the movie. I liked it. I thought it was really funny. I thought it was hilarious. Loved the variety of characters. Also, I'm pretty good at guessing movies. I, I watch a lot of them. Could not de- guess a single thing that was going to happen next in this film. Twist and turns. Twist and turns. Kept me on the edge of my seat. At some point, I was like, did I accidentally switch films? No, <laughs> it is the right one. Hilarious movie. We'll go through the story. We follow this man who is a piano player, Akash, and he, to our knowledge, as we watch him, is blind, but he is crazily gifted. He lives on his own. He has a cat. He plays piano. He has a little boy neighbor that lives downstairs who believes that he is not blind, and he is convinced that he will catch him not being blind. And you're like, why is this little kid picking on this blind guy? And so you see him playing piano. You see him living his life. And then you see that he is actually not blind. And it is a lie. So and now the question doesn't get answered till way later in the film. But I'm watching it and I'm like, why pretend to be blind? (laughs) It seems awful. So he is blind. And then he meets this girl. And she's like, oh, you should play piano at my dad's restaurant. So through him playing piano at this restaurant, he comes across a famous old actor. Yes. Pram or Pradam. And Pradam loves him. And he's like, you're going to play for me and my wife for our anniversary. Now, the wife, younger, failed actress, who everyone speculates married this older actor for his connections. Right. So we, we would call her a gold digger. Right. So he goes to play for them. And... As we know, he is not blind, (laughs) Uh, but she thinks he's blind. So what happens when he enters the house? Her lover is there and he sees a dead body, which is Pradam. And he's playing because he has to be blind. And I thought it was so funny because if I could not pretend to be blind, if I was like, oh, I got to go pee. And there is a dude with a gun in the bathroom and I have to pee and be blind and I can't act startled. No, I am not that good of an actor. This dude should have been an actor. Yes, 100%. It was funny for me because just the interaction between the characters, her trying to get the dead husband out of the house and her lover out of the house, looking at this guy, like second guessing if he's really blind or not, you know, and then the who ends up being the chief of police is like looking at this guy like, are you really blind? It's so, like, and they're trying to get the body out. It was just funny. It was, it is so funny. And the way... That she's like playing a recording of his voice. Yeah. I was like, okay, even if he's blind, like he's not dumb. And it's if you lose one of your spens- senses, you're supposed to have heightened other senses. So like if he's supposed to have heightened hearing, like he would hear you click play and hold the speaker. I don't know. She was dumb. So he is now embroiled in this scheme. So then he, being the good guy that he is, goes to the cops yeah. and is like, I have to report a murder. And as he's saying this, Chief police the ch- chief of police walks out and we don't know him as the chief of police. We know him as the guy in the bathroom that we feel, think killed per- Perdon. And so he's like, oh, my cat died. Like literally like 180 it. Yeah. was like, I'm not going to get caught for this. And then the guy's like, oh, I'll take you. Yeah. Yeah. So you think you think the, the chief police knows that he's going to kill. Him. <laughs> yeah. And then the way that he watches him into being like, you're not blind <laughs> or are you blind? I have never, I mean, obviously in this film, he is not blind, but I have never seen so many people question a blind person before. No. In my life, they're like, what is happening? I mean, obviously he's dumb too. I mean, he lives alone, but he has like his fake contacts out and he's trying to be slick. Oh, it was so funny. So this is the beginning of the story, right? And now he's stressed out. He's performing at the club still. She shows up to put on this whole act of, my husband, it's our anniversary. Where is he? Just kind of show. So 
is she a good actor? Is she a bad actor? I don't know. She had a lot of people fooled yeah. for a lot of it. So, yeah. so then so now I think her character on its own is very interesting, especially her dynamic with the police chief. And we'll get into it later because she's, they have a very interesting exchange once we get more into the story. I just don't want to forget. So I'm saying it now. So then the killing, you would think the killing stops there, right? It does not. We have an old lady neighbor who nosy is a witness. Neighbor. Nosy neighbor. Nosy neighbor. We all got one of those. <laughs> and she is nosy. And she is hysterical. Simmy, the girl, ends up throwing her off the over a ledge. Yes. So now this woman has a body count of, I'm going to say two, even though she didn't kill her husband, uh, she covered it up. Yeah. And then she killed this woman to cover it up. So now, <laughs> and poor Akesh is just walking in to all these situations. Yeah, he actually saw her throw her over. He saw her throw her over. And I felt so bad for him. I was like, doesn't this guy deserve a break? <laughs> so he throws her over. I mean, he sees her throw this woman over. And he's like, I'm I'm blind. <laughs> I didn't see a thing. I'm blind. <laughs> he's still peddling the story. So then, throughout all this, he is seeing the daughter of the owner at the restaurant. They are intimate. And then he witnesses a murder. So he cannot handle both of it yeah and so she's upset she's like what happened this is not what i was expecting because it seemed like they had a real connection right so then he's like i've seen two murders now he's scared he's he's like i want to go to london to compete in this show simmy the wife shows up to his house and he's like what and she's like are you blind are you not blind she poisons it she catches him. She catches him. But she poisons him. And she, he try, she tries to poison him twice, but he tips her off that he's not blind by catching the second one. And she tries to put like poison in his cup, and he gets up and knocks the cup over, and she's like, I knew you're not blind. So then he gives all this bullshit story about why he pretends to be blind for his music, and I literally wanted to be like, you could just shut your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you could literally just like not look down. You don't have to live your life a lie. Yeah. Well, she she gave him something for the funeral. It was like a. Oh, yeah. She gave him like an offering. So yeah. she gave him like a funeral offering, which poisoned him. But he didn't know that. But right. then she tried to poison his drink, which right. he caught. Yeah. Which I think was a test. Right. And then he's like, well, I'm not blind. I'm a liar, but I can't pay attention. I can't look at the keys when I play them. Music is better than me in the dark. OK, dude, literally do anything else. Whatever. <laughs> so now he and now he starts convulsing to the ground. And you're like, oh, is he dead? Is he poisoned? Is he paralyzed? What's going on? He's asleep. His little girlfriend comes and Simi pretends that they have just been intimate with each yes. other. Yeah. And this girl's pissed. Yeah. She's like, are you kidding me? Never talk to me again. Like, blah, blah, blah. Flipping out. He is asleep in bed. He wakes up and is actually blind now. So yeah. Simi, instead of killing him, has blinded him, which is like, and I think it's so funny because it's said a time and time again in the movie is like, blind men can talk. Why don't you just kill him? Right. And so he's now blind, pissed. No one's going to believe that he wasn't blind before. And now he's actually blind. So now he has to live his life as a blind man. And his girlfriend won't talk to him. He has no job because she said he can't play at the, at the bar anymore. They sold the piano. They sold the piano. Simi, this, one, this other woman, has just taken his eyesight from him. And now he is basically all alone by himself. What is he going to do? So he try so he sends a so he's trying to get out of this situation that he is very embroiled in. And then this comes from my favorite conversation that she has with police chief. She goes, "You are posturing to like be this big man and you have not done anything." And she's like, "I came up with the plan. You just disposed of the body. I threw this other lady overboard. I blinded this guy." Like she's like listing off all the dirt that she's done. Yeah. And she's like, you want to be dirty, Harry, but you don't want to get dirty. I thought that line was so funny to me. (laughs) It killed me. I loved it. And I thought it was so true because he was like literally doing nothing. Right. As we see cops often do nothing. Except posturing to his wife. Except (laughs) posturing to his wife. And then I thought he was so mean to his wife and like hated her cooking. And she was just like waiting at home for him, cooking him these nice meals. And he was like cheating on her. Trash. Hated him. So now he's like, okay, my girl, my mistress thinks I'm not a man. So he goes and tries to hang Akesh. Yeah. Fails. And now Akesh is running, passes out in the street, blind. Yeah. Throughout the story so far, we have met a, bar- a barrage of like characters. The two being Muley and the lottery woman. I have forgotten her name. And Muley is a cab driver that 
always gives a cash a ride and the lottery lady we see her being like oh <laughs> blind people always have good luck and then yeah. like he like picks a winning card so they find him in the street and you're like oh friends and now the movie takes a turn that i was not expect. i mean were you expecting what no. was going to happen next no so they pick him up it is muley this and this woman they bring him to like what looks like an abandoned hospital i mean he's blind he can't see but it's abandoned and they're like, we got a doctor here. The doctor's going to be able to fix you. I don't know. It's so funny because there's like all these like separate phone calls happening with the doctor swarmy. And he's like, oh, I'll, I'll take both kidneys. So these guys are actually black, black market organ dealers. Yes. <laughs> and I was just like, what is happening? So they're like, OK, we're going to take both his kidneys. And he's like, don't take my kidneys. And then they actually think he's a psychic because he can see he can tell all these details about them, even though he's blind. And they're like, You're a psychic. It's like, well, he wasn't blind the whole time. So that he, he saves himself for a little bit. And then he's like, OK, then he's like, OK, I'm going to work together with you guys. And we're going to actually blackmail Simi and the police captain. So now the story is just getting crazy. <laughs> and it's like, what bad decision could you make next? So they try to do this like deal where they're going to get all these. I, all this money and Muley and the woman go to grab the money. He's obviously tied up yep. with Simi and then the doctors somewhere being an asshole. I don't know. And then so there's a shootout, obviously, at the money drop. Muley gets hit. So then she, the woman, derails their plans a little bit, is holding on to the money and is taking him to the hospital. Now, what I thought was so funny and so interesting and I don't know, I thought it was very clever that they threw this in, kind of just like how life comes full circle and karma will always get you. So they're black market organ dealers and he dies trying to harvest organs. Yeah. And he's actually the voice of reason throughout the whole thing, being like, oh, only take one kidney. Let's save him. Let's do this. Let's do that. And she's like, he's dead. What do you want to do now? And she's like, what do you mean he's dead? He can't be dead. And then she goes, well, you can give up his organs for donation. And I thought that was so funny. And I was like, the black market organ dealers now getting harvested for organs. You love a full circle moment. So the doctor is explaining this to the woman. The woman's ripping apart the money, trying to be like, I have money. You can save him. It's all fake. Yep. It's not the money that they think. So now she's devastated. So now we're done with Muley and her. And we go back to kind of a comedy of errors, like how they were are working together. And as they're working together, the doctor comes and the doctor is dumb. Like, I don't know if he's just like greedy or like doesn't understand. So he gets the blood results back for Simi and lights up. And then she stabs him a few times. Akesh saves him. And then they throw her in the back of a trunk, knock her out, throw her in the back of a trunk. And when you're like, oh, the movie's ending. It is going to so many more crazy <laughs> places. We are not close to done. Which is why I would say I love this movie. It is hysterical. It's just the twist and turns. It's so many twists and turns. So many twists and turns. So now we already know this doctor is a black market organ dealer. We're driving. And he's like, all right, I'm going to give you millions of rupees because we're going to Saudi Arabia for this sheik who needs this rare blood that Simi has. What? Yeah. For his daughter. For his daughter. What? And this guy's like, okay. And he's like, and then you can get her corneas too if they're a match and it will be like double duty. And then you kind of see a catch like breaking down at this point, just being like so embroiled with these criminals and just like so over his head being like, I just want to go home, drop me off. I want to go to London. I want to play music. I want to do this. I want to do that. And then Simi wakes up. Right. And the guy, the doctor Swarmy, I thought that was, his name was funny too. Swarmy, the Swarmy doctor. <laughs> And so she kills him yes. and gets into the car. And now he's still blind. Right. Akesh is still blind. So he's talking like Swarmy is still there. And it's Simi. And you're just like, what is going to happen? Yeah. And he's trying to save her. He's trying to save her. And she hears that. She, he's like pleading for her life, pleading for his life, just pleading. And it's her driving. And then he's like, you got to let me out. You got to let me out. You got to let me out. And then she actually lets him out of the car. And no one knows what happens left. We jump two years in the future. No, no. He, she crashes the car. No, that happens after. Oh, okay. Because there's a cliffhanger. Oh, yeah. Yes. So now we're two years in the future. And he's playing in. So I didn't know. I couldn't recognize the town. It seemed like some indistinct European town. Yes. But he's in Europe. 
and he's playing at a bar and it's actually following his ex-girlfriend. She's in Europe, has a lover, it looks like. And she sees him and she's like, oh, you're still like and shtick, whatever. And so they go get coffee and he ends up telling the rest of the story, which is Simi lets him out of the car. She drives away, does a U-turn. And then this is what's so funny because in film, nothing. It's what I like to call now. This is going to seem like a tangent, but it's coming full circle. So Chekhov's gun is a literary, literary, was it like device? Thank you. I could, I almost used the word term is a literary device where you don't mention or do anything at the beginning of a film that has no purpose. So this movie opens up on a rabbit getting hunted by a hunter. Yes. And you're like, oh, this is random. What does this have to do with anything? So now we've reached the end of our film and we see the same rabbit and hunter. So we see, and this is what I would call Chekhov's gun, being the rabbit getting shot at. Because why would you have, why would you mention a gun if you're not going to shoot it at some point? That This is the whole idea of Chekhov's gun. So we have the rabbit and as Simi's turning around to what looks like mow down a cash in her car, the rabbit is there and the, sh- the hunter shoots the rabbit the rabbit flies into the windshield of Simi's car, causing her at the rate that she is going at her high speed to run the car off the road, flip it, crash it, and burn. Yes. All, all in front of a cash. And he's just watching this. And then it is assumed that he tells a story about how his friend helped him get to London. And from there, he's made a life for himself as a musician. And the girl's like, wow, this bitch Simi ruined so many people's lives you should have taken her eyes because at this point he's still blind now Ben question for you do you think he took her corneas 100% 100% because he hits the can at the end right I don't think the story he told about her crashing the car is true true no I think he went with the doctor killed her killed her and the doctor and her took the eyes took the blood took this stuff for the took the the millions yeah I okay, so I totally agree with you. I wanted, I was, I'm so happy you said that. So yeah, so well, I guess, and I guess it's, it makes the good point that he's lied throughout the whole movie. Why wouldn't he lie now? Right, he's a liar. Right, the liars are gonna lie. And then that's the movie. Movie ends, hits the can away, and you're like, oh, he can see. Which begs the question: Why is he going back to lying about being blind when all this bad shit happened to him because he was lying about being blind? Right, hysterical. I would 100% recommend this movie. It is so funny the way all the characters have incredible chemistry, I think. Yes. yes. And none of them have a single brain cell. Everyone <laughs> is the dumbest person. Yeah. And it is so funny. Yeah. Even the little boy. I Even mean, the little... <laughs> he catches him. He catches him red-handed on, 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 on camera. On camera. But he messes up and he gives the lady the... The phone. The phone. She erases everything. Okay. Honestly, though, like, she was pretty smooth in that. Gives him the dollar, takes the phone, deletes it, gives him the phone, takes the dollar. Like, I was like, okay, honestly, she's very ruthless. She was a good actress. I don't think in, like, real life, but, like, in the acting that she had to do for this, she was very good. So she could have made it if she wasn't a gold digger, I think, or a cheater, philanderer. But a very funny movie. It I like it because of the lightness. So we've been covering very um, historically accurate, not historically accurate, but movies that are based in historical fact. Dark. Dark. Historical facts. Dark historical facts. Obviously, a lot of trauma. There is a lot of trauma that has happened in India because of the British Empire. And we've covered a lot of films about this. I was so excited to watch this movie because it was fun. Yes. And this is a movie I would see in a theater on a Tuesday night with my friends, and we would all laugh and have a good time. And the music, Akesh made was good good he was, was really good. good i mean and i his story of i, I i'm pretending to be blind because people tend to like blind musicians better i was like what no what? <laughs> who are you true. ray charles was, get like, off it i was like that's not how that goes i mean <laughs> do you want sympathy or do you want to be recognized as a good musician and here's the thing he was good enough to make it on his own yes. he did not have to have this blind gimmick yeah and I thought it was just so funny that he kept it. And it was like, what kind of like leg up do you want to have on people? Also a red flag. Also kind of a manipulation thing. I mean, it saved him when he was able to manipulate the black market doctors yeah. and looters. Because they're like, because he was like, you have the tattoo of Lord Shiva. And she was like, 
I do. You have the third eye. You are Lord Shiva. <laughs> you weevils. Like, and then he gets like, I don't know. It's just the way that every bad decision leads to another bad decision. I think the smartest decision that anyone makes in the story is his girlfriend in the beginning when she goes, never talk to me again. Yeah. Don't come back. Never call me. Don't talk to me again. I mean, even the wife, when she's shooting at the, the door for the police <laughs> officer. You know, I was uh, like, what's your end game? You know, I was mad because she forgave him. Well, she didn't forgive him, kind of, but she did finally forgive him. And I was like, no, don't forgive him. Shoot him. <laughs> Shoot him. I thought it was so funny, too, when like they like faked her suicide. And she's like, she's dead now. And then the other girl, the um, girlfriend is like, they ran away together. Yeah. I thought it was just like, it was so funny, like the different like ideas and mentalities. But no, I think it's inferred that she does stay with him. Yes, that she get, like, gets back with him. Yeah, or like forgives him. Yeah. But also, how could you forget? I, I don't know. Well, I think the... I think the police officer dies. He gets stuck in the elevator and he never... They yeah, never, he gets... He does die. Yeah, because they never... They he, shoots, he shoots in the dark and then you hear him go, ugh. Uh, shot he, himself. Because yeah. he's dumb. Yeah, why would you shoot in an elevator? Because he's dumb. Because yeah. as she said at the beginning, you're dirty Harry, but you're dumb. Yeah. You don't know what it takes to be a real cop. How'd yeah. you become the chief of police? Right. That <laughs> mustache? It was funny. It was very funny. I would say this movie was hysterical. I will revisit this movie probably more often because it's something that like I could throw on with my friends and we could have a good time too. Oh yeah, I mean, there's so many things that you're gonna catch. I mean, even though we caught a lot, there's still so much more to this oh. movie that you could be like, oh wait, what? Oh, what's this? What's this? I mean, I thought the movie was so fun. Yeah. The mo- just just the ideas that these people like. What makes you think that this is a good idea? I don't know. It is very funny. I would highly recommend it. It is on Netflix. I watched it on Netflix. And it. I just like, I love a movie that's silly. Right. It kind of reminded me in tone alone. Did you ever see the older movie Ruthless People? Yes. yes. Didn't it kind of give movie. you yes. that like sort of yeah. like silly, dumb criminal vibes? Yes. And I, I love a dumb criminal. I mean, maybe it's because I grew up with Home Alone and they're the dumbest criminals. Yeah. 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 I think Akesh is pretty slick too when he meets the, the actor. Oh. And he goes, you sound just like the most famous actor of all of India. And yeah. like, he just so plays him. So. Like, yeah. But I think that shows like how good Akesh is at like manipulation. He's very manipulative. And lying. I mean, he pretends to, he convinces everyone he's blind. Yes. Yep. yep. I don't know. And also, this is the thing. So he has sex with his girlfriend, right? How do you pretend to be blind? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wait, wait. Why do you have newspaper? To kick up, to pick up cat poop. <laughs> like, oh, you cook for yourself? And he's like, not well. Like, just like the dumb little things. Uh, yeah, you can, this is the way they, like, he came up with some quick answers. He oh, did, yeah. yeah. He did. He came up with some quick answers. And then the cop's going to kill him until the cat shows up. And then yeah. the cat, he's like, you found my cat. And yeah. the cop's like, okay, maybe this guy actually is blind. Yeah, it's just so, so funny. I'm like, this is, it's just, it. The twist and turns this movie takes is just hysterical. I mean, because it's like like you're saying, it's just, you never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen. If you told me when I read the description of this movie, I knew it was a dark comedy. But if you told me that he witnesses a murder and then ends up teaming up with black market doctors yep. to harvest organs, I would be like, what the heck kind of movie is this? Yep. How did we get here? But it makes sense. Yep. Everything makes sense. Yeah, And they betray him. And they betray him. <laughs> Again. As they would. <laughs> and he, they, he goes, I can't believe you're doing this. They're like, we're bad guys. <laughs> we're bad. They literally say it. They're like, we're the bad guys. Like, what were you expecting? And he was just like, uh. like, right? he is so manipulative, but at the same time, very naive. Yes, he's very naive. Because, like, he believes that, like, the cops will help him yes. at, in the beginning. And then they're just both so dumb. I love when the wife is talking to the chief of police and, like, his, like, general or whatever. And she's like, Wow, you guys are working on this case. Maybe now you can actually get a promotion. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. I was like, "Wow, go off, queen!" Like, right? if you they... solve it, you'll become famous. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like they are bad at your their jobs. You're right. <laughs> so I never, I don't know. Like, did the actor shoot himself by accident, or did they wrestle for the so, gun? I mean, I, okay. I never got to that point. So I never got to that point. So in my mind, they wrestled for the gun, yeah, and then he accidentally got shot. Okay. Because she says, when they're having the whole Dirty Harry conversation, she says to him, she goes, we would never be in this situation if you didn't bring your gun. But right. you always have to bring your gun and be the big guy. Because you, we see Pradam holding it. Right. He pulls the gun out. 
And then we see them like coming in and then he drops everything. So in my mind, they wrestle for it and he accidentally gets shot yeah. in that because that they don't seem, they don't want to kill. I mean, she shows the most remorse for him dying. Right. Because she's like, he would have forgiven me. This would have been fine. Right. I would have my, <laughs> had a TV show by now. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, her own personal thoughts. <laughs> her own personal thoughts. But then I also think it goes to show, like, if you are entering a relationship for things that are not love, your mind is always going to stay onto those things. Right. Like, you see it when she's talking, like, to the daughter, Danny. She's very, like, rigid and is like, okay, bye. Like, no, not trying to forge a connection, not trying to forge love, not trying to create like this family that like he wants she's really just in it for herself right right. and she's in it time and time again for herself again yep i agree 100 percent. but i would highly recommend it i think it was so fun so we're gonna shout out uh ron m yes ron m on youtube who gave us this suggestion hilarious you have great taste my friend this movie made me laugh a bunch and i loved it must see must see had no idea what was gonna happen i i think that's the best part too is that it was so crazy but everything made sense right right and it kept you guessing it kept you guessing and watching you had to watch to find out what's gonna happen oh my god and then at the end i wanted there to be like a sequel yeah right (laughs) where like i don't know what would happen but there's a sequel i don't know and then uh this movie also had very good success very wide success while i was doing some research on it i saw that it was getting translated into a bunch of different languages so it could be shown we did watch it in hindi yeah. but i was reading that it is getting translated into a bunch of different languages so it is a popular film people yeah. responded well to it people liked it i think people love silly crimes like this it was fun because it's funny yeah. and it's light and it makes you laugh right and it's, it was a murder mystery it was a murder mystery but it wasn't a mystery <laughs> because we knew that she did it and she covered it Oh, my God. And then when the one guy starts, like, peeing on the watch <laughs> in the urinal, I was like, oh, my What'd God. What's with this watch? <laughs> He's like, the toilet? <laughs> Just everyone was so funny. Well, you guys, like I had said in the beginning, we are loving these suggestions. We have so much fun watching these movies. We have not a limited scope, but we do stick to, we are creatures of habit. So anything new and exciting for us, we enjoy because it's expanding our film library. Um, it's expanding our worldview, and I love movies like this. I will watch more. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, and I like to shout out to the people that are, are, are listening to us. You know, in the United States, Ghana, India, Emirates State. Yeah. I mean, we got people from all over the world listening to us, and we greatly appreciate it. And we want you all to give us any suggestions you have for movies. Yeah. Uh, leave comments, DM us. We're always around. We're always listening. We're always waiting. We we have some exciting things on the horizon. A few guests, a few more suggestions that were thrown out, and a film that we're both really excited to talk about. So yep. keep listening in. And uh, Ben, you got anything else to add? Nah, covered good. All right. Well, we'll catch y'all next time on What's Happening. Mm-hmm.